Hello. Today, I wanted to bring you guys a Corrupting Cry guide, as I believe it is one of the best new skills to come out of 322, as the other new gems we have gotten seem a bit lackluster, either mechanically or damage-wise. Corrupting Cry, in my opinion, is more or less a perfect skill and is up there with Righteous Fire and Caustic Arrow in terms of gem design, as it is very smooth damage over time skill with strong base AoE coverage and enough damage to clear T16s smoothly with not very much investment. Kind of. Kind of, because I really don't suggest using Corrupting Cry if you don't have a level 30 plus Forbidden Shaco, which can be expensive at roughly 10 to 50 divines, depending on how popular the skill is at the time. But other options of a plus gem levels chest or a 5 link gloves will cut your DPS by over half, which with enough investment can technically still clear tier 16 maps smoothly, but at that point I would suggest playing Caustic Arrow instead, as even though Caustic Arrow does less damage, it is a little bit more smooth and has a ton of AoE coverage with Arrow Nova. To get into the numbers, on screen you can see three skills and their base damage at level 35. Decay is a support that no one uses because it sucks, because its base damage is terrible. Caustic Arrow is a good skill and can easily get into the 30 plus gem levels with a plus levels bow for 15-ish divines. That leaves Corrupting Cry, which does 310% more damage than Caustic Arrow at 10 stacks of Corrupted Blood. So again, even though Corrupting Cry is a bit more clunky and has a bit less AoE coverage than Caustic Arrow, I believe the base damage pushes it over the edge in terms of being better than Caustic Arrow in the current meta, but it's not by a large margin. If GGG removes Tattoos next lead, I believe the skill will go back to being roughly even with Caustic Arrow. Since Corrupting Cry has such high base damage, and you really only need 2-5 to five million DPS to very smoothly clear any T16 map, here is a POB of a naked level 80 character with two items, one being a fractured staff that can be made for roughly 10-20 to 20 divines, based on the current market prices of a fracture, and a forbidden Shaco, which again can be 10-20 to 20 divines. These two items and a level 80 passive tree gives you 3 million DPS, which is more than enough to clear all content in the game outside of Ubers. Now, some people may be thinking that Corrupting Cry will be going away if Warcry tattoos go away after Ancestor League. I'm here to say the skill will be a bit more clunky, but everything should be fine. To prove this, I ran several maps using General's Cry, which had a 0.7 second cooldown after my investment, and also I tested Enduring Cry, which is double the cooldown at 1.4 seconds. 1.4 seconds can be achieved without tattoos, with a cooldown Helm Enchant and Eldridge Boot Implicit after the Ancestor Lee for General's Cry. In my video compare, you can see that even though my War Cry cooldown is doubled, my clear speed is only marginally worse. I believe this is the case due to a few factors. The biggest one being if you get your War Cry cooldown very low without your movement speed being very high, your War Cry will overlap each other, thus not hitting a bunch of new mobs. The second reason is that even if you're running around with your War Cry on cooldown, Mobs will chase you, thus your damage coverage isn't exactly based on your cooldown, but more your movement speed and your in-game movement decisions to gather mobs together. And lastly, you are a human, and even if your movement speed was a thousand percent and your Warcry cooldown was a microsecond, there is diminishing returns on these sources of power because you, as a human, have to process what you're seeing on screen and complete a function. So, when you see build creators advertising 800 movement speed, but then they regularly run into walls, or run into dead ends, or pick up a piece of loot, or pause to read a mechanic, or pause to kill a tanky mob, their extra investment into movement is only giving marginal returns, typically. As you can see by this picture, doubling the cooldown of my war cry and cutting my movement speed by 37% only slowed down my clear speed by roughly 10%. As with a longer cooldown, I am not overlapping my AoE coverage, and even though I have less movement speed, the mobs around me still run at the same speed, thus gathering them up is fairly equal.
Additionally, since tattoos are in the game currently, I am able to get Enduring Cry down to an acceptable 1.4 seconds, thus giving me a ton of life regen to make me very tanky. In future patches, if such low cooldown is not possible, you will be forced into using General's Cry, which is fine, but you will just need to invest more into life regen, but since we are on the left side of the tree, this is also easily achievable. Now that I gave you the basics of the build, and my thought process behind some of the mechanics, I will now talk about my specific setup. I am choosing to run the build as a magic find build, since it only requires two strong items to get most of its damage, thus leaving me a lot of gear slots to equip magic find gear. So I am running quantity on most of my pieces, with mage blood and a high armor body armor for defenses. I run most of my auras in my weapon, since it has a plus 2 support craft, helping out my Enlighten, and I run a legacy increased quantity gem in my helm, but increased rarity can be used in League, which will be very noticeable, since rarity is semi-low on my current setup compared to other magic find builds. Or, if you need an extra damage link, you can link efficacy as your fifth. As for my passive tree, I like circles, so I went with as many circles as possible, with Unnatural Instinct by Scion's Darting Area giving me mana reservation on my Blasphemy Curses, damage, and AoE. I run a Might of the Meek to increase the lots of Warcry cooldown passives around it. I run Warrior's Tail also to lower my Warcry cooldown, which is enabling me to use Enduring Cry. I run an elegant hubris with supreme ostentation, so I can tattoo all my small passives, as I have no need for attributes now. The final circles coming from two large clusters that give me damage and defenses, and lots of AoE coming from my medium clusters, which allows my war cry to basically hit the whole screen while mapping. Lastly, for gems, I run a 6-link Immortal Call in my chest, which is probably the first time that has ever happened in DOE. I'm not completely sold on it, even though it is making us very tanky, as I have very reliable endurance charges. Other options could be using a 6-link Vol Reap if you're struggling to kill map bosses or non-uber bosses, if you plan to do that on this character. But there is something fun about just running around in circles, holding both left and right click mindlessly, very much like an RF playstyle, and everyone loves RF. For the passive tree, I chose to play Juggernaut because its starting location is very good for the nodes that I want to pick up, but also it gives us a good amount of defenses while mapping, since once again, the build doesn't really need that much more damage, since it has very high base damage. But for those with a little more coin in their pocket, you can pick up a Forbidden Flesh and Flame for Aspect of Carnage from Berserker for 40% more damage, which is by far the best damage allocation you can get for this build, since there are very few things in the game that scale our non-bleed tagged Corrupted Blood. So, that's the Corrupting Cry build that I have thoroughly enjoyed playing over the past week. If you haven't given the new gem a try, you should, as the playstyle is quite fun and smooth. But if helmets get out of control expensive, and you haven't played Caustic Arrow, I would suggest still playing Caustic Arrow, as it is also very smooth and fun. And I have recently published videos highlighting that. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, put them in the comments, and I'll get to them. Thanks.